what we do is to study uh, new materials which have uh, the thickness of only one or a few atoms and because of that, of that they have a very interesting new electronic properties. One thing that has been discovered recently is that you can take two different 2D materials and combine them together to uh, obtain properties which are not existing in each one of the two materials separately. People had combined two different 2D materials together and seen that they can emit light before us. But it turned out that in all cases where this was done, it was only a couple of different combinations that worked, uh, you really needed to have a perfect alignment of the two crystals. The two crystals had to have exactly the same distance in, in between the atoms. Um, if you would have rotated the two crystals by a little bit, there would be no light coming out. So it was very, a very non-robust process. It was very interesting because it had never been seen before, but it was not, e not easy to control. But what we did uh, was to find a way to have this combination of materials to emit light under very general conditions. So what we have done is to find a class of materials that if you combine, they're going to emit light irrespective of all details of how they are put one on top of the other. You can rotate them, you can translate them, it doesn't matter. They will emit light and they will emit light with the same frequency. Uh, and if you change the two materials, you can have a different frequency. So you can now cover a large part of the uh, light spectrum by just choosing two different materials or maybe changing just their thickness. If you change, uh, if you go from one monolayer to two monolayers, you change uh, the frequency of the emitted light. Now we have a process that is supposedly very stable because it doesn't depend on all these details. So we think that because of what they did, it will be possible to, to, to have manufacturing process on a large scale that will allow to put this material together under fairly simple conditions, much simpler than before. So we think that this is an important first step for future applications. Now, in the case of this specific research, what this is useful for is, the, again, the fact that we are able to emit and potentially also detect light uh, in a, in under very selective condition of frequency, uh, which is important, for instance, for, for telecommunications. I mean, uh, optical fibers, these kind of things are getting more and more important to have fast communication. For that, you need to have light sources with very specific uh, and well-defined um, properties and frequencies, uh, and that's what, what we're going to be able to do with these devices. So it will be very important, uh, for application at least, uh, to be able to grow many of these materials on large scale with high quality so that you can combine them. So this is a, is a, is a, is a very important activity that will have to happen. We are going to keep on looking for new phenomena that, uh, that can be used in application or also just that they are interesting from the funda fundamental, fundamental part side. Uh, it often happens that when you find something interesting from the fundamental side that you had not understood before, then you realize that that might have applications and it stimulates new thinking for, for that, that will be useful in the future.